TJ Nelson Jr. I met um, I don't know, five or six years ago in Salt Lake through the internet. Uh, we've watched a lot of episodes of The OC. Um, <laughs> but, you know, we've gone on road trips. Uh, he's, shit you not, he is the best photographer and videographer I know. He worked for three or four years at the Apple Store, the Creative Bar. You know, people would come in and say, I've got all these photos, what do I do with them? And he'd show you how to use all the iLife stuff. And um, he's going to tell some stories about that. Yeah. All right. TJ. Good morning. Um, so my, my story is a little bit more about, uh, you know, the previous talk was more of a, a universal uh, application. Mine is more about personal failure. Um, yeah, so, uh, so one of the things that um, uh, my dad always told me was fail as fast as you can um, because then you're kind of free to do really great things. And my mom um, expected a lot of me. So she said, be brilliant. And so I kind of held on to the be brilliant part, and I, the whole uh, failure thing really scared me. So uh, all throughout elementary school, I was, um, I, I, basically I would fake sick every single time there was some kind of oral report or, or anything that had to do with the presentation. And, um, uh, and I, I shit you not, Valentine's Day was the worst, because that is like the scariest thing to not get a Valentine, right? So um, uh, I kind of grew up with that, and, and in my profession, um, have has gone towards um, towards film editing. Um, if anyone has ever sat in an edit room, you know that you're in the dark, you're in the cave, by yourself for eight to fourteen hours a day, and you don't really talk to anybody unless they they want changes on something. <laughs> so I did that, and I was at. Uh, a youngster, I, I edited um, on my first film when I was uh, 20 years old, which is kind of unheard of because it's a very, um, it's a profession, the film world, you know, you start off as a PA and you uh, get coffee and that's what you do for a really long time until someone gives you the trust to sit in front of a computer. So, or a camera or whatever. Um, so I did that and uh, eventually got really lonely. Um, <laughs> not talking to anybody is, is kind of uh, really depressing. And um, being, you know, an, an Apple geek, I guess you would say, like uh, in Salt Lake, I saw there was a retail opening and, and thought it'd be a really fun thing to take a break from the film world um, and go into something more social. So um, I applied and I never heard back and, and I was like, well, whatever, you know, it's retail and I can do it without. Um, and then one, uh, one afternoon in June, uh, I got a phone call that said, we saw your application, but um, we don't think that you're right for the job that you applied for, but there's this new position called the creative where um, you teach how to use software. And software is something that comes really easy to me, I can learn it really fast. So uh, learning new software seemed to be uh, kind of my bag. So um, in August of 05, I, I uh, interviewed for the position and um, uh, they, they liked me and, and said they'd be in touch. And um, so uh, I kind of sat and waited and and waited and waited and waited and then finally in uh, September of, of that year um, they, they uh, called me up and said um, you've got a week we're gonna send you to the Bay Area to train and uh, we'll stick you in a store for a bit and so um, I packed my bags and they sent me off and we spent two really great weeks on the Apple campus it's back when they they treated their employees a little bit better. Um, so we got we got you know per diem and and hung out on campus and ate at the cafe and kind of just saw how the apple culture was and how it worked. And um, and then after that they stuck us in a store. 
And um, I was under the impression the entire time that I would be giving kind of one-on-one -on -one lessons, because that's kind of how it works the best. Um, but as uh, retail kind of changed, um, they started doing more and more of the uh, oral presentations. If you've ever been to an Apple store and heard one, they're talking about iPhoto and, and stuff like that. And so um, my first day in Palo Alto, um, Tim Gregory was the, the guy that I was shadowing. And um, he asked what applications I knew the, the least. And it's GarageBand. Because I'm, you know, I'm a photo guy. I don't, I don't record music. And, and so he said, well, that's great. We have a, a, a GarageBand um, lesson coming up at 10. And you've got an hour to learn the script, learn the software as best you can. And we're going to stick you out there. <laughs> and I was like, oh, well, this is what I asked for, I guess. It's more social experience. Um, so I went in the back of the store, and I sat in, and I flipped open this huge white binder full of, uh, of uh, the script on how to talk about GarageBand. Apple has a pretty specific vocabulary. Um, you learn things that they like to they like you to talk their way. They don't want you to talk in that, you know, in you can personalize it, but there are there are ways you present certain things. So um, I'm going through the script and, and learning about uh, MIDI keyboards, which was like just to me. I didn't know, you know, I didn't know what MIDI was. And um, and and how to create a song. Basically you have to create a song in you know in your allotted time, which is an hour but about forty five minutes. And so, um, 45 minutes later, I didn't get the full hour. He comes back and he grabs me and he says, all right, well, you've got these two ladies who are, are they're regulars, they come and hang out, they come shop and sit and listen to the presentation. Um, you've got a couple of Stanford uh, professors who, um, they all like to hang out too. It's, you know, no pressure. And, uh, and you have Laureen. And that's Steve Jobs' wife. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, you know, I, I turned, I, I know I turned like bright white, and I, I kind of cower out into this big uh, wooden horseshoe shape with two screens behind me and, and uh, put on the microphone. And uh, what precedes is the worst oral presentation one could ever give in their life. <laughs> um, in front of the people who you find would be the ones who are judging you the most. Um, uh, first up, you know, I open up, I, I open up my, my keynote presentation, the screens don't work. And so filling dead air, trying to like press buttons on the little console to try to like, screens are lighting off, lighting turning off, lighting turning off. <laughs> Um, I'm talking and I can hear myself just like I can hear myself now, but I don't know if the speakers are working, which they weren't. Um, uh, then, then comes the, the part where I, I bring out the microphone and I bring out the, um, the MIDI keyboard and uh, the MIDI keyboard's not working. And at that point I've turned uh, from a, a white white to a bright red. Um, okay. I can hear the heartbeat in my ears. Uh, my, my cheeks are hot. I can feel them. And um, uh, at one point, Lorraine says, just take a breath. Do your best. And so I took a breath and uh, with 15 minutes left, figured out how to get it all, how to get it all done. So um, at that point, I felt like, okay, um, that was the hardest thing I've ever done, ever. Uh, going from someone who doesn't speak during the day to is, is giving these presentations. And um, you know, since like uh, uh, after that, I moved to the, the Salt Lake store, and I got more proficient with it. Um, I was asked to uh, move to the Manhattan store, and um, was so comfortable that I was teaching people how to teach. I had I had um, messed up so badly that I had figured out all the ways not to present. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and, and for 
for my year in Manhattan um, was teaching uh, new employees how to give presentations and how to give uh, uh, these lessons one-to-one -one and to a group setting. Um, so that kind of, uh, I, I, I finished off with my my employment at Apple and really liked it. I wanted to get back into the, to the film world, so um, I got a, a gig on another film, came back to Salt Lake, and found that uh, in that span of time, learned a lot about myself and about what uh, I'm capable of doing and how I'm capable of presenting myself. And then, again, still pretty young, I think I was 20, 23 or four at that point. Um, uh, I had the confidence to deal with these companies like Panavision who are used to, to speaking to old hats and people who are in the industry for a long time. And um, I had the confidence of, of calling Panavision and saying, you know, how does this work? This needs to work this way. Um, how can we get it to work on our movie? Um, and uh, and I, I think back to what my dad said about failing very fast, and my mom saying about being brilliant, um, and how those go hand in hand. You know, you you hear hear these like lessons from people in your life when you're young, or or even now, um, about uh, about things like that, and how um, and you don't quite take them to heart until you've gone through the experience and you can look back and see like, oh wow, yeah, I should have just given that world presentation in second grade uh, and, and I would have been much more prepared now. Um, and, and even, you know, lying in bed last night, still get a little pitter-patter knowing that I'm going to speak in front of a group of peers and, and what they're going to think and, and how that's going to come across to them, but I know it's not going to go as worse as it did for the learning and the rest of people the first day. So, um, a quick talk, but that's all I've got. Oh, do they do that to everybody? Oh, uh, do they do that often with, with Laureen? Um, no, I was the lucky one. Um, she does visit the Palo Alto store and the surrounding area and shop and stuff, but it was sort of just a random occurrence that presented itself to me. Did you have an opportunity to speak with Lorraine after? Um, just to, you know, kind of tell her, maybe have her tell her husband, give her some good, you know, the some furthest, good words for you. The furthest I could be from Steve, the better. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, no, uh, but but she did give me a wink before I cowered into the back. <laughs> so that's enough for me. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for listening, guys. Um, thank you.